as that medical voice of reason. In China, it's Dr. Zhong Nanshan, the well-known respiratory expert speaking exclusively with CNN. I cannot compare with Fauci, who is the advisor of uh, the president, always, uh, always been standing in beside the president. Perhaps he does not physically stand next to President Xi Jinping, but Zhong has the trust of China's central government. His advice sparks near immediate action. Take, for example, Wuhan's unprecedented lockdown. On January 18th, five days before the city was shut down, Zhong traveled to the original epicenter of the outbreak. He questioned the local health officials. At the very beginning, they kept uh, silent. Zhong, who gained international praise for his work on SARS 17 years ago, believed this rapidly spreading novel coronavirus was far more devastating than being portrayed by Wuhan health officials. I suppose they are very reluctant to answer my question. The local authorities didn't like to tell the truth at that time. Publicly, Wuhan health officials as late as January 19th labeled the virus as preventable and controllable. And later, the city's mayor even acknowledged not releasing information in a timely fashion. Zhong pressed harder for the actual numbers, and when he got them, he headed to Beijing on January 20th. He briefed the central government, and within hours, he was addressing the nation in this live interview on state-run CCTV. Zhong revealed that human-to-human -human transmission was likely, and as proof of that, he said the virus had already infected multiple medical personnel. That's a very dangerous signal showing this kind of disease is very contagious. So I suppose at that time, the central government listened to our uh, com comment, uh, subjection, and advice. Within three days, Wuhan went into a harsh lockdown that lasted 76 days. Yet even with China's central government now taking the lead, there is still skepticism over the official numbers. Zhong believes it's partly political and says the Chinese government would not benefit from underreporting. The government have got a lesson from the outbreak of SARS 17 years ago. They have announced one of the steps that all the cities, all the government department should report the, the true number of diseases. So if, they, if you do not do that, you will be punished. What do you believe to be the origin of this virus in particular? I think the origin is very difficult to draw any conclusion at the moment. But I believe this kind of disease is originated from uh, animals. U.S. President Donald Trump and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo have said they have evidence that it leaked from a lab, namely the Wuhan Institute of Virology, an origin theory many international medical experts and even U.S. intelligence say is highly unlikely. Now it seems more and more medical experts do not believe that it originated there. Do you feel that with certainty? I think so. Uh, took up two weeks to make it a very close and deep checkup that proved nothing about that. No, I don't think so. Zhong's focus now is on preparing China for a second wave of the outbreak. Over the past few weeks, new clusters of cases have surfaced in several cities, including Wuhan. We are facing a big challenge. It's not, uh, not better than the foreign countries, I think, it's at the moment. Zhong, like Dr. Fauci, has achieved a celebrity status here in China. His scientific expertise aside, many are impressed with Zhong's physical drive. What is it that you have been doing during this period to stay mentally sane, physically fit? How does Dr. Zhong conduct his days? I still keep uh, exercising and sport and so all the things that keep an open mind and eat not too much every time. So that's why I seems to be still can uh, do something in my age of 84.